Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TF for Less Talk. And today we have two guests from CNCF, Carolyn Van Slyke, Technical Lead of Contributor Strategy and Josh Berkus, Chair of Contributor Strategy, of course, at CNCF. Josh, Carolyn, it's great to have you both on the show. Hi, great. It's great to be here. Thanks. Thanks so much for inviting us. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have you here. Let's start with the basic, which is, uh, I mean, CNCF, uh, Kubernetes, you folks have, um, I mean, great uh, contributors there. I think after Linux kernel, you know, uh, CNCF has the most computers there, contributors there. So it's also great to see that you do have uh, this committee like contributor strategy. So I want to understand what is the goal of this committee? What is it? What does the body look like? The CNCF is a nonprofit with um, a that supports and fosters a large number of cloud native projects. I think it's currently at somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 projects. And the thing is, a lot of these projects consist of folks for whom it is really their first open source project, um, or at least the first one that has had any sort of serious public involvement. Um, and one of the things that originally uh, Paris uh, Pittman and I realized is that these projects could use a lot of the ideas and processes and knowledge that we had generated in Kubernetes, in the Kubernetes contributor experience um, team. Um, and so we started contributor strategy in the CNCF as a way of helping projects sort of level up. Um, my particular focus was actually on project governance, um, was an area that I really see needed to be addressed. Um, but there's a lot of other areas such as uh, what we call contributor growth, which is recruiting contributors, et cetera, um, that uh, Carolyn uh, joined to help with. Yeah, a really common question that a lot of projects have is you know, they, they know the code, right? They understand how to make great distributed applications and services. But when it comes to how do I find more people to work my project? How do I encourage them to engage and like, uh, help design solutions um, and become maintainers for the project. That's where a lot of us, like all of us, even myself, stumble. And uh, that's one of the requirements of being in the CNC app is finding a diverse group of maintainers to ensure a healthy project. So it's something that's very important to all of us at the CNC app is, is uh, crowdsourcing, I guess, solutions and strategies for uh, building a healthy, inclusive uh, contributor base and making sure that these projects are sustainable year after year. As Josh was talking about, you know, there are a lot of folks who uh, may have contributed to open source for the first time when they got involved with CNCF or uh, Kubernetes, but there are also a lot of companies also in today's world, you know, almost everybody is using open source and they also, you know, want, but sometimes they may not even have, you know, they don't even know how to get involved with open source. So does this, uh, this group also kind of help those companies so that they can very easily come and start, you know, contributing to the very, the very project that they rely on for their own businesses? We really only do that to the extent that we can sometimes redirect, right? Because sometimes for some reason, like we've done a presentation or been on a podcast or something and, and they don't actually know how to connect with the project. And so if they come to us, we'll redirect and we'll say, Hey, here's how you find the maintainer list of the project. Here's how you reach out to them. Um, the, and then, you know, from there, the project needs to take it unless the maintainers come back to us and they say, Hey, this has been a one company project since we joined Sandbox. This is a common problem. There's been a one company project since we joined Sandbox. And this and such a company wants to get involved with our project. Um, what do we need to do? And, and that is a common question that we end up helping with. Um, you know, and a lot of it comes down to, okay, we well, need some rules around contributions and around who gets to make decisions um, and how things get reviewed, et cetera. And you'll maybe need to put a lot of stuff in writing that wasn't in writing before. I think that's the most critical piece of a lot of what we do is that it's difficult to confidently uh, contribute and be a participant in the open source ecosystem when you don't know what the norms are, when you don't know what's expected in you. And a very large part of what we do is we document common norms in uh, the CNCF, and we encourage projects to write down how they're different and uh, give people confidence that when they do engage with the project, they won't be embarrassed. They don't have the wrong idea of how things will work. And it really just kind of smooths things out, all the interactions, and makes it a lot easier for you to be confident that this is going to go well. 
And actually, you brought a very good point. I talked to a lot of folks who contributed their project to CNCF. It's an incubation phase. And of course, everybody, hey, we want to move, you know, to graduation, everything else. And the as you rightly said, sometimes, you know, one of the biggest contributors is coming from the company itself. So they have to grow the community as well. So, so what role does the group play to kind of help them? Because once again, they're good at writing the code, but may, may, may not be that great at, you know, building a community around a project. Yeah, so some of the things we do is we help create templates that just get you thinking about how you'd like your project and its community to work and also identify areas where you could use help. Maybe you don't need someone to uh, you know, write all the code for you, but maybe you do need help with project management, uh, your roadmap, um, gaining adopters, putting out content materials for your project to get people excited and help your users level up with using what you have. Um, a lot of times people need to be encouraged to kind of outline that there's more that you can do with open source than just write code. We'd like to emphasize non-code contributions as being incredibly valuable uh, to the success of your project. The other thing that we do is we provide opportunities and, and forums like Maintainer Circle for projects to actually share information about what worked and what didn't. Because, for example, you can do quite a few different kinds of activities in order to attract contributors. And so one of the sort of important bits of sharing is, hey, what activities worked, what made them work? Um, I mean, as an example, before she actually joined Tag Contributor Strategy, our first um, familiarity with Catherine was that she actually came to our tag to do a little thing about the, um, what do they call the program in Linkerd? Um, they, they, they launched a program about high, specifically for highlighting and publicizing new contributors um, that, that, seemed, that really worked to get them to attract new contributors, which was really important because it started out as a single company project. Um, the, um, so, uh, you know, so there's, there's a, a lot of that, right? Because most of your cloud native projects, the people who are in charge of them are primarily coders. They're primarily programmers and recruiting volunteers, which is really what this sort of skill set is, is not their skill set. Um, and so sharing a lot of information between projects about what worked and what didn't, maybe even collaborating on things um, between projects um, is really helpful. At what stage do you folks get involved when a company makes a contribution? Because a CNCF or Linux Foundation in general, the, the, you folks also provide a lot of resources. You no know, marketing resources are there. Also, governance projects have freedom to have their kind of own governance. But you know, Linux Foundation they have their own kind of model that they can follow. So, talk about at which stage you enter there, and how do you kind of like either it's like onboarding or help them. Hey, these are the things. So, I just want to understand. Hey, somebody just contributed the project, and how they are welcomed within CNCF. Yeah, luckily it's not, um, you don't have to do everything all at once. So our pattern is more that we incrementally engage with projects as they mature and their needs and the scope of what they need in their project grows. When you're first onboarded onto um, the CNCF, we do uh, kind of encourage you to take a look at what contributor strategy has to offer, usually around, um, some of the documents that are required for sandbox projects, which is the very first level uh, when you donate a project to the CNCF. So for example, you're going to need a contributing.md file um, in your repository when you first uh, join. And if you don't have one or you're not quite sure what would be a good one to have when you're in the CNCF, we have templates that get you going thinking about what could be there. Um, and so usually it's just like one or two things, but then when you submit to incubating, well, now you need to start thinking about a couple more things. And then we have more ways to kind of engage with you and provide you more uh, things to kind of chew on. But we don't try to just uh, give you 100 things at once. So for example, we're not asking you to think about security audits or governance models to so your project is much more mature. The earliest that we've ever been involved is because people are starting to know that we're around now as a committee. Um, sometimes projects will reach out to us before applying to Sandbox. Um, because they know that the CNCF um, Technical Organizing Committee expects certain things in terms of a project looking open before they join the CNCF. And so 
they'll reach out to us about their contributor docs or about their governance docs to say, um, you know, hey, before we officially submit this, would you mind taking a look and providing us with any feedback? Um, that's more common when they're applying for incubating or graduating. Because incubating and graduating, there's much more serious requirements, right? So at at the incubating level, there's requirements around, um, uh, you know, having the project being open to contributors who don't work for the founders. Um, and so that, that comes with a certain amount of, uh, you know, community participation stuff. And then at graduating, um, the project needs to actually have a formal governance. Um, and, um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll actually get sort of officially involved at those points, but most of the time, if um, people on our team are involved, it's going to be either because the project reach out to us because they feel they're at a stage where they want help, um, or alternately, because we're reaching out to them around a specific activity that affects many projects. Like one of our subcommittees is mentoring, um, which includes the people who run LFX. Um, so, um, they will reach out to projects specifically around mentoring initiatives. Excellent. So, so the whole thing is that you know, even if the uh, there's a company or project that considering contributing their code to CNCF, they can get your help so that they know the processes, hey, how to, uh, and also they can also get involved at later stages when they are planning for in incubation or uh, graduation of the project as well. So you can. So basic idea is to help them better, you know, get better footing with open source and CSF. Excellent. Uh, now, as you also said, you know, sometimes they approach and sometimes you reach out to them. Uh, first of all, who can, you know, join the group? Uh, from, from, from what I hear from you, it looks like, you know, if you are interested in contributing your project, this is the place you should get started. But, you know, what are the official guidelines? Anybody who has the time, honestly, we, we could really use some, some more volunteers. We've had a number of initiatives that people have proposed that we have not been able to follow up on because um, we have the sort of limited pool of volunteers. So like like the other TAGs, and TAG stands for Technical Advisory Group, I think, um, uh, they're all volunteer committees. So um, anybody can join who wants to volunteer. Um, and to you know avoid you having to have 20 years of experience, um, we have, we're divided up into subcommittees, right? So you can focus on one thing, right? There's a governance subcommittee and contributor growth and contributor tools um, and um, mentoring. Um, and we have somebody who's once again trying to restart the diversity committee. Um, and there's maintainer circle. We just had, believe it or not, a new volunteer. Um, because we haven't had a volunteer who was focused on the maintainer circle meetings, we haven't been having very many. And we just had a new volunteer join in November who said, that's what I want to do. And so as a result, we're going to have, you know, probably, you know, three, four five of them this year when I think we had one, two last year. So um, and so there's lots of opportunities if somebody is interested in this, you know, organizing projects, helping projects be better open source projects. Um, I, uh, you know, if if people have a little bit of time to put into it, is there some kind of commitment needed also from there? You're like, hey, you know, if you're joining us, this is the amount of time we do need from you. It's not like you just join it and you never showed up. So if somebody is like planning to join, what kind of commitment they should be like, like making so that you are benefiting from them and they are benefiting from you folks as well? I would recommend that if you're interested in, um, being a contributor intermittently, like, you know, sometimes, you know, I have time for this weekend or, or whatever, but you can't say six months in the future. A really great way to contribute is to be uh, not in a leadership position, but show up to the meetings, uh, listen to what people are asking for help with and just pick a task and help with that one task, you know, on the weekend or a week or whatever, when you when you know, I have time, I can do this and I can, I can uh, provide like a good chunk of work, right? Um, but if you're interested in, say, for example, helping to lead um, one of the larger initiatives, I would expect that at least for the next six months, you're like, I can do an hour a week to attend the meetings um, and help coordinate people. For people who just have a little tiny amount of time, like any open source project, we have a repository 
that has a list of open issues. Um, so, I mean, you know, somebody can get involved without even directly interacting with us. Just pick up one of those issues and say, hey, you know, I did this. Here's the document or here's, you know, the piece of automation code. Check it out. You, you're talking about and there are sort of areas that you're still looking uh, for volunteers. What are the areas where you feel that, hey, you need some volunteers in this area or it's like something because people come, keep coming and going? It's, it's not a certain, but, or you do feel, hey, we need some folks in this specific area. I, I would say that um, when we first started, we started actually in 2020, January of 2020, and it's been a long road for a lot of the original founding members uh, and leads in these groups. Um, and so for some of us, it may be a great time to transition and bring someone on with the idea that if, very quickly they could become one of the new leads for one of these initiatives. Because um, obviously we always need people to help with, with the daily tasks and everything, but we are super keen on having more people engage with, say, the governance uh, working group that we have or the contributor growth working group, which is some of our, our larger, most impactful groups at the moment, um, and getting people to not only contribute, but eventually maybe take over running the weekly meetings and help setting our direction and roadmap for where we'd like to evolve these projects um, over the next year? I'm going to say a few other very specific things. So um, like the governance subcommittee right now is actually the people it has been for a couple of years. And so we're really looking to add a couple of new people so that rotation is possible. Um, and honestly, because more projects are asking for governance help, which is a good thing, but, but it means that like Dawn and I are starting to reach capacity there. And I, for contributor growth, the, the requests are kind of endless. Um, we have a whole ton of more documentation and updating some of the old documentation and advisory and that sort of thing, um, uh, as well as, you know, if you really feel like it, um, you know, working directly with projects to help them on contributor growth initiatives and then writing that up. Um, the, um, for mentoring, um, we have a reasonably good handle on LFX, but we could really use volunteers who are dedicated to Google Summer of Code and to Outreach Eve. And then somebody else who's maybe dedicated to senior mentoring. So that is, instead of mentoring new contributors, mentoring existing contributors who are moving up to being like reviewers or maintainers. Um, because that's something that projects need a lot of help with. They need a lot of help for how do we do that. Um, and having somebody who was in mentoring who was dedicated to that would be really good. Um, the um, And if you are technical and would rather write code, um, I think Container Tools has lots of to-do items. Contributor Tools. Contributor Tools. Yeah, yeah. Contributor Tools, just give people a little hint about what that is, um, is oftentimes in order to run a large-scale project and, and manage interacting with the community at scale, you'll see tools pop up. So for example, in the Kubernetes space, there's a tool called Prow, which helps them label issues, assign them to people, find reviewers, kick builds, all sorts of stuff. But if you're a smaller project, usually there aren't uh, tools like that that are just available for free that work really well with the open source workflows that we have. And so we're hoping to kind of fill, fill gaps and create little tools that a good chunk of CNCF projects would be interested in just picking up and using as a building block to help manage their community. And you, you two folks are in the leadership position. Uh, what kind of mentoring is also there for, you know, so that uh, uh, if somebody is like, or what things are in the process uh, to hand over the baton to the next, you know, uh, leader of the project, of the group? So for people who moved up uh, to leadership, generally the, the process is that you start in one of the subcommittees with with whatever you know issue is the most interesting to you and and then you just end up showing up more and more and taking on more and more stuff um i you know definitely that was catherine's route um the um and um so um that would be true for for sort of anybody um is you know first first become leadership on one of the subcommittees and, and this is honestly true for a lot of open source projects right for a lot of open source projects, right? You start out by, you know, contributing to one of the repositories of the project, and then becoming a, um, uh, you know, a reviewer, um, uh, uh, 
maintainer on that repository, and then you learn other stuff about the project, and you become a maintainer on the whole project. And it's really not different. Um, the um, We haven't had enough people showing up to need any kind of formal program around that. Um, uh, you know, because we're only dealing with one or two folks at a time, we've just been doing the thing where, hey, we just hand them responsibility for more and more things um, as as they are able to. If you look at 2023 is the beginning of the year, uh, what are the things that you folks are looking at, you know, that, hey, in this year, this is our goal, this is what we want to achieve this year? Ryan, I know what's on my list, uh, you know, on a personal level, um, is that one of the most common and most difficult asks from projects to the contributor growth uh, working group is we're a project that was originally founded by a single company. And now we really need a more diverse group of maintainers uh, who are being supported by other companies. So maybe, uh, you know, like a project I started as Porter, it was originally all people from Microsoft. Uh, and then over time, like, how do we get contributors from other companies? And really, that is a super difficult question that to this day, we don't really have like written guidance that says, you know, one, two, three, this is how you attract senior contributors who are at other companies who are being basically usually being paid for their time and get them to become uh, a maintainer on the project. So this is something that we, we started with this survey that we put out to the CNCF contributors and tried to ask them whole sort of questions to understand where are their difficulties um, in joining projects? Is it coming from their employer? Is it coming from Maybe, maybe problems figuring out how to contribute to the project to identify maybe some more of the problem points that we can help projects understand that they can improve and help bring in more senior uh, contributors. But I think the you know, next steps is maybe doing one-on-one -on -one interviews with people um, and, and maybe some trial and error of having projects test out different strategies and share what they've, they've done and been successful with. Because one of the requirements uh, as you move along with the CNCF and move up is that you need to have more than one company uh, essentially supporting the project so that it's healthy. And uh, by the end of the year, I want us to have robust, vetted advice that people can rely on that isn't, isn't wishy-washy. You should be able to follow it and have some, some success or at least an understanding of where you should improve if it's not you know, a prescriptive strategy. One of the sort of minor things for contributor growth is uh, the CNCF has launched um, this currently beta site called Clotributor. Um, and it collects help wanted issues from all across the CNCF projects. And so one of our, our sort of, you know, tactical goals is to help projects make use of that. Because one of the requests we've had from potential contributors for a while is to have sort of a jobs board that is, you know, so if somebody can come in and they can say, hey, um, I'm, you know, just out of Rust boot camp and I'm a Rust contributor now and I know a little bit about databases, where can I help? Um, the, um, so, um, you know, so now that the tool exists um, to help projects actually make use of it, right, um, in order to attract additional contributors. Um, you already heard about what mentoring is looking for um, in those terms. Um, and then um, for governance, we're looking to finish a bunch of our documentation and to more formalize. So we propose to the TOC that a governance review be made a formal part of the graduation review. Um, it's been an informal part for some time. And they said yes, which means we now need to actually create the process for that formal review um, and of course do it um, because they said yeah they said yes and here's a project that wants to graduate um, <laughs> so the um, uh, you know so that's going to be sort of one thing um, uh, it would be really nice to actually seriously restart the um, the uh, diversity uh, subcommittee um, uh, we keep having this issue that a lot of people are interested in that topic. Um, they, they really recognize it's something that needs to happen. 
Um, but we never get the dedicated volunteers with time available to, to actually follow through on it. Josh, Carolyn, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about uh, this group. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show or maybe we'll see you at KubeCon in Amsterdam. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity to get the name out here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.